6.4 properties of vectors. So we're kind of racing through this stuff because it's pretty basic and um, normally this section I would just tell my students to read it and do the homework because it, it's pretty straightforward. But there are a few little things I thought I would run over some of the, um, the homework questions that some of my students had problems with so that um, you can be on top of it. Okay, so basically the commutative property of addition, the associated distributive, these are all basic um, addition properties that you just know intuitively now. In other words, if I had, uh, you know, something like 3 plus 2, you'd say, oh, that's the same thing as 2 plus 3. And the same thing holds true for the addition of vectors. So if I had a plus b and then you added c, so let's say I had uh, 4 plus 3 and then I added 2. You'd say, oh, that's the same thing as me taking 4 and then adding 3 plus 2. So you get 9 no matter which way you do it. Distributive property, same thing again. Um, you're familiar with this. So if I had 2 times 3 plus 4, that would be the same thing as 6 plus 8. Right? If I did this times this and this plus 8, so you get 14 no matter which way you do it. With vectors, however, if you're adding um, 0, if you add the 0 vector, you get vector A. So you wouldn't say I do vector A plus 0 gives me vector A. It's You have to add the 0 vector to it. Um, the associative law, again, these are just uh, examples of expanding how to, how to expand something. And again, straightforward stuff, right? So you should be able to do the homework with this for this assignment quite easily. Okay, let's look at some of the homework questions. Again, I said this is going to be very quick because I think more importantly for some of you right now, you're looking at some of those crazy word problems that you want to um, get a better grasp on. So I, I would like to get to those as soon as possible. So if I had just a numbers, this is kind of first question from the homework, and it says something like, um, what is the identity element for the addition of numbers? So in other words, two plus what gives me two? And obviously you'd say the question mark is equal to zero because two plus zero is two. What do I multiply three by to get three? Well, if you're dealing with numbers, it's one. What if I had the vector a, though, and I wanted to add something to it to get vector a? You're not going to add 0. I just told you that right up here, and I'm sure you've already forgotten. <laughs> no, you didn't. You add the vector 0 to get a vector a. And what do I multiply vector a by? What scalar would I multiply it by to still have the vector a? And in this case, that's just 1, right? 1 times the vector a. So you can multiply a scalar times a vector. Easy. Okay, question six, a little different. It says it's a rectangular prism that they draw for you, um, similar to one. Actually, number 11 is very similar to a question I did for you yesterday, I think. Um, this says, if I add all these together, what do I get? Now, you can follow it along on your little cube, you know, do E, G, G, H, H, D, D, C, and then figure out what's left over. But I'm going to show you a little trick. If these had all been mixed up, for instance, because we do know that we can use the commutative property to add in any order, I could do the same thing for this. However, this is already written in a perfect order for you to give the answer very easily. Because if you see, it goes E, G, G, H, so I can cancel these G's. Because this is the same thing if I go E to G and G to H, I've gone E to H, right? And if I go H to H and I go D to D, so my answer is just E to C. Oh, wow, that was so easy. So if I had mixed these all up, you could reorder them so that the um, tip or the, let me think now, this would be the tail, this would be the head, right? So that the head and tails are together, then your answer is just these ones right here. How easy is that? Okay, um, then there was another one, I think it was uh, write a vector that is equivalent to, and then they give you this, so they say E, G plus G, D, and again, these are in the same order, right? D, E. So if I go G, G, D, D, I've got E, E, so that is the zero vector. Bingo. 
Okay, let's look at one other question here, and that's going to be it for this till I'll take a look at some of the more complicated questions for you. So if two vector x and three vector y's are a and mm, this is b, express x and y, vectors x and y, in terms of vectors a and b. Well, if you want x and y in terms of a and b, you have to first write this. We're going to write x, express x and y in terms of a or b. And in this case, I'm going to write x in terms of a first. So I'll do it the long way so you can see every little step. So I do vector a minus three vector y's. So my intention is to find this in terms of x and plug in here. And then I have y in terms of a and b. And then I can plug it back in and find x in terms of a and b. Okay, so I have this. So vector x is equal to one half vector a. I'm dividing by two minus three halves vector y. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take this and plug it in right up here. So now I have minus one half vector a, and this is just showing you that you, you know, you're doing um, the commutative law here, the distributive law, because I'm multiplying by a negative. So negative one half vector a plus three halves vector y plus five vector y's would be equal to six vector b's. Now I can combine these because they're both y's. So I have minus one half vector a, and this would be 10 over two, so that gives me 13 over two vector y's is equal to six vector b's. And now I want y, just y in terms of a and b. So we'll leave the 13 halves vector y We'll bring the other one to the other side at half. So this is just basic algebra stuff, right? And I multiply by 2 over 13 to get one y. So that's 12 over 13 vector b's. And if I multiply this by 2 over 13, um, I would divide the 2's out, and I would have 1 over 13 a's plus 1 over 13 vector a. So is that good? We did 12, 12 over 13 vector b's. Mm, somehow I think I made a mistake somewhere along the way because that's not when I got the last time I did it. Do you see your mistake? Do you see the mistake? 13 vector y's. Well, maybe I put a 13 here and it should have been a three. Oh no, it was 10. 10 over two, 13 over two vector y's. Um, 13, it's always these little questions that make you make mistakes, isn't it? 13 over 2y is 6b minus 1 half becomes plus 1 half a. And I multiply by 2 over 13. That gives me 12 over 13 b's and 1 over 13 a's. Yeah, that's okay. And now I'm going to plug that back in to find x. So vector x is going to be 1 half vector a minus 3 halves times, and I'm going to plug in my value for y. So 12 over 13b plus 1 over 13 vector a's. Oh... For some reason, I still think I've made a mistake and I can't see it right away. And I don't want to go back. I don't have time. I want to get to some good work for you here. So that's going to be uh, 36 over 26. 36 over 26. That would simplify. I could do that in a second here. And minus 3 over 26 vector A's. And then that should give me 3 over 26. So 13 minus 10, that gives 10 over 26 vector a's. And minus, I'm going to divide this by 2. That gives me minus 18 over 13 vector b's. And I think I'm still right. I don't know why I thought that was wrong. I think it's right. If you see a mistake, let me know. Okay, I'm going to move on to bigger and better things for you. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe.